الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد من الله على المؤمنين اذ بعث فيهم رسولا من انفسهم يتلو عليهم اياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمه وان كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كل امتي يدخلون الجنه الا من ابى قيل ومن يابى يا رسول الله قال من اطاعني دخل الجنه ومن عصاني فقد ابى او كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama e kiram elders beloved brothers in islam there is no measuring tape there is no yardstick there is no mathematical scientific formula or calculation that any one of us can utilize that will do even an iota of justice to enumerating counting contemplating acknowledging the manifest bounties and favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us wa sakhkhara lakum ash-shamsa wal qamara da'ibain wa sakhkhara lakum al-layl wa an-nahar وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنْسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Many many places in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enumerates his bounties his favors his ihsanat upon us One adequate example هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ حِينٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا What price tag can you and i put on this wujud this body where did we emanate from alam yakun nutfatan min maniqi yumna qutila al insanu ma akfara min ayyi shay'in khalaqa min nutfa what at one time was one drop of sperm one cell the size of the cell take a centimeter divided into 100 million parts in three layers of darkness fi butuni ummahatikum in the womb of your mothers man ausala ilayka al ghidha wa anta janinun fi batni ummik stage upon stage upon stage of development wa laqad khalaqna al insana min sulalatin min teen thumma ja'alnahu nutfatan fi qararin makin thumma khalaqna al nutfata alaqa fa khalaqna al alaqa mudgha fa khalaqna al mudgha idhama fa kasawna al idhama lahma thumma ansha'nahu khalqan akhar فتبارك الله احسن الخالقين what at one time was a drop of sperm then a clot of blood then a lump of flesh stage upon stage upon stage of creation that currently in the scientific environment or world in which we live in millions if not billions if not trillions of dollars have been spent centuries and centuries and centuries of research and yet they also acknowledge that this human body they have only understood about 13% of it 100 trillion cells combined the genome sequence of this human being leave 100 trillion cells just one cell inside the dna of that cell inside that cell is the dna 1 million the size of that cell that dna is made up of 3 and a half billion nucleotides 3 and a half billion characteristics just to write down those characteristics that are contained in this one cell you'll need 500 encyclopedias each one 900 pages long to such an extent that they say that the wisdom contained in one cell 
of the body of a human being is more than the combined knowledge of the entire human race. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءًا مَذْكُورًا This is one cell. You are a composition of 100 trillion cells in Khalika Kainat. Allah poses the question to you in the Qur'an that, O oh, human being, did they not pass upon you a period of time? لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْءًا مَذْكُورًا You were nothing. No one spoke about you. You were a non-entity. You didn't exist. إِنَّا خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِن نُطْفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ We created you. Elsewhere in the Qur'an, أَلَمْ تَرَوْا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا Allah says, will you not see, will you not acknowledge, will you not realize, will you not contemplate, will you not accept the manner in which Allah has placed into your service everything in the heavens, everything in the earth. وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا And Allah says, بَارِشْ كِتَرَى Like rain droplets, my ni'mats and my bounties are raining down upon you. The circulatory system of this human being, this human body, the circulatory system is more than 90,000 kilometers long. More than three times the circumference of the entire earth is the circulatory system of one human being. This blood that is flowing through this, three to five thousand journeys every day. The pump, the size of a fist, is pumping more than 65,000 liters a day. This three or five liters of blood in your body is composed of 24 trillion blood cells. Every second the blood cells die, seven million blood cells are replaced. What price tag? We can go on. The human anatomy, Quran invites you. Allah invites you. Allah reminds you. Wafi anfusikum afala tubsirun. Will you not ponder? Will you not reflect? Will you not acknowledge? Will you not realize? أَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا Allah says, بَارِشْ كِتَرًا Like rain droplets, my ni'mat and my bounties are descending upon you. ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنًا Some you are aware of, some you are unaware of. Interspersed throughout Qur'an. The verses I recited in the beginning. سَخَّرَ لَكُمُ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ دَائِبَيْنِ سَخَّرَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ Allah says, the sun, the moon, the stars, the day, the night... All this, a beautiful, perfect system has been placed, put into place. Tashkheer has taken place. Allah says, we have locked all this for the service of insan. وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوا Allah says, we gave you everything that you asked for. What you desired, beyond your desire we gave you. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you have to start counting and enumerating my bounties and favors upon you, Allah says, you will never do justice to this. The reality, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ You are very oppressive and you are very, very ungrateful for the ni'mats and the bounties of Allah. Interspersed throughout Quran, Allah makes mention upon ni'mat, ni'mat, upon ni'mat, upon ni'mat, bounty, upon bounty, upon bounty, relevant to this occasion that we have gathered. There is one verse in the Quran. Those who understand Arabic, mashallah. Those who don't, even they, if you ponder a little bit, will understand. The entire mode of expression of this verse changes where Allah says, La qad. Lam in Arabic is what we call emphasis, ta'kid, lam. And then qad, hatore kitara, like a hammer. Qad, la qad, definitely, without a doubt. Man Allah. Man Allah. Allah made ihsan upon you. Without a doubt, Allah is... What is this? That Allah, who in hundreds of verses in the Qur'an, is telling you, I gave you this, and I gave you this, and I gave you this. I put the heavens into your service. I put the earth into your service. I put the crops into your service. The milk from the cow is for your service. The honey from the bee is for your service. I put the fish in the, of the ocean in your service. I created the sun, the moon, the stars. I created you so many verses. 
Allah says, I did this for you, and I did this for you, and I did this for you, and I did this for you. But no way in referring to any of these things does Allah present it like this. لَقَدْ مَنَّ Allah. Without a doubt, it was my special ihsan, my special favor. In other words, like sometimes when you mention a lot of things, and the brain is such that it can't retain many things. So what does the astute teacher or professor do? He said, listen, buy sab kuch bulja. Forget everything else I said. Forget everything else I said, but don't forget this one thing. In other words, not literally forget. Not literally forget. But if you don't consider everything else, don't make the mistake of forgetting this one thing. This is what it means. And this is laqad manna Allah. That Allah who gave you everything, says I made ihsan upon you. In other words, of all my ihsan, this one favor, never forget it. This one favor that I'm about to tell you about, Allah is saying, don't forget this one favor. What favor? What it should have been, logically. Allah says, I made ihsan upon you when I created you. I made ihsan upon you when you were nothing and I brought you into existence. I made ihsan upon you when I created the capacity in something which is 100 million times, the 100 million parts of a centimeter and you came into existence from that. I made ihsan upon you. I made ihsan upon you when I gave, gave you a mother who loves you. A father who loves you. I made ihsan upon you when I gave you health, when I gave you wealth, when I gave you property, when I gave you life, when I gave you children, when I gave you happiness. It should have been any one of these things. Yet, Allah leaves all that. And Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ Allah. It was my special ihsan upon you. إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ when I sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to you. In other words, this ni'mat, this bounty, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not a rabiul awwal question. It's not 12 days of the year. It's not a few jalsas or gatherings. It's not one or two nazams or naats. And then the life carries on the way it was carrying on before. No. Allah says of all my ihsanat, from the second you were born till the second you die, don't ever forget this ihsan. This bounty, this favor that Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent amongst you. Is ba'atha fihim rasulam min anfusim. As I mentioned, it's not a rabiul awal question. In fact, only zuhur, Allah revealed. Allah revealed His Nabi in this month. His Nubuwat was not in this month. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu one day poses the question, Mata wajabat lakan nubuwa ya Rasulullah? O Nabi of Allah, when did Allah make you His Nabi? When did Allah make you His Nabi? Technically, or the expected response according to the calendar. If you do a calculation, I was 40 years, 6 months, 10 days of age. It was a Monday night. It was the 21st of Ramadan according to the riwayat of Tirmizi Sharif. I was in ghar hira the cave of Hira. Jibreel came down with the first five verses of Surah Alaq. And Allah made me his Nabi. This is what we would have expected the response to be. And what Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu also was expecting. But what was the actual response? Kuntu nabiyan. Kuntu nabiyan. Wa inna Adam munjadilum bain al ma'i wa teen. Adam alayhi salam's mold had not yet been formed. And already I was the Nabi of Allah. Adam alayhi salam's mold had not yet been formed. Qazi Ayaz in his shifa. He mentions one riwayat, the narrator is Kaab Akbar. Qara Allahu Ta'ala Surat Yaseen Qabla an yakhluq as-samawati wal-ard bi alf aam. He says, Allah recited Surah Yaseen 1000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Allah recited Surah Yaseen 1000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. 
Isbahani's riwayat, Inna li inda Allahi asharata asma, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, My Rabb gave me ten names. My Rabb gave me ten names. Ulama say, Kasrate asma, Kasrate muhabbat par dalalat karti hai. Excessive number of names indicates excessive love. A mother does not make iktifa. She doesn't suffice on one name. Mera lal, mera jigar, mera chan, mera dil ka tukra. How many names? Because of excessive love, she does not suffice on one name. Quran, hadith, kutub sabiqa the books that were revealed in the past, ulama have mentioned 525 names in the shan of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 525 names. This riwayat of Isfahani, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, My Rabb gave me ten names. Ana Muhammad, wa Ahmad, wa Mahi, wa Hashir, wa Aqib, wa Fatih, wa Taha, wa Abu Al-Qasim, wa Yaseen. Wa Fatih, wa Khatim, wa Taha, wa Abu Al-Qasim, wa Yaseen. Ten names. Of those ten names, he says one name was Yaseen. Allah recited Surah Yaseen 1,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. How old are the heavens and the earth? How old is this creation? أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ There was a period, it was only Allah. Allah created the heavens and the earth. When? When? Scientists estimate 13 to 14 billion years ago. 13 to 14 billion years ago, they say the creation of the heavens and the earth occurred. Obviously, they don't say creation, some accident or whatever it is. The heavens and the earth came into existence, according to scientists. True or untrue, Allah knows best. Hypothetically, for argument's sake, we accept this postulation that it was 14 billion years. 1,000 years before this, Allah recited Surah Yaseen. What is Surah Yaseen? Yaseen. Wal Quran al Hakim. Inna ka lamin al Mursaleen. Inna ka. Inna ka. Verily you. Kaf. Kaf in the Arabic language is used for something that exists. Inna ka. Allah says by the qasam of the Quran al Hakim. You are my Nabi. When did Allah create Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When did his nubuwat start? When did his nubuwat start? Allah knows best. But, according to this riwayat of Abu Huraira, Kuntu nabiyan, wa inna adama munjadilun bayna al-ma'i wa teen. Adam alayhi salam's mold had not yet been formed. And already I was the nabi of Allah. Zuhur took place in Rabiul Awwal. Allah revealed his nabi in this month. Here also, ulama say, why not Ramadan? Why not the Ashur Hurum? Why not the other sacred months? Why not Rajab? Why not Muharram? Why not Zul Qada? Why not Zul Hijjah? What we call the sacred months. In Aidat al Shuhur, in the Allah Hithna, Ashara Shahran fi Kitabilla, Yoma Khalaka Samawati wal Ard, Minha Arbaatun Hurum. Allah says there are four sacred months Rajab, Zul Qada, Zul Hijjah, Muharram. None of these months, not Ramadan also. Why, why Rabiul Awwal? Allahu Akbar, Muarrikheen, ulama say he did not need a sacred month. His existence gave sacredity to the month. This word Rabi in Arabic means what? Spring. What does spring denote? After the harshness, after the ravages, after the darkness, after the Difficulties after the storms, after the rigidity of winter. Rabi'ah, the spring comes. With it comes rejuvenation, re-enlivenment. With it comes the promise of warmth, the promise of rainwater, the promise of life, the promise of rejuvenation. After the darkness of kufr, zulmat, what had mankind done? Mankind had been steeped to such level of darkness that somewhere 
A piece of stone was being worshipped. Nauzubillah is Allah. Somewhere someone ascribed a son to Allah. Someone ascribed a father to Allah. Someone made the malaika the daughters of Allah. To such an extent, the very understanding and perception of who is Allah had been distorted and distorted and distorted so that the entire hearts of mankind were covered in zulmat and darkness. Rabi'ah, the spring Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had come. The time also, ulama say the time also was not accidental. Born Subasadik, born daybreak, 22nd of April, 571, according to the Christian calendar. Islamic calendar hadn't started. But it was Amul Field, the year when Abraha tried to attack Kaabatullah, six months after that. 22nd of April, it was a Monday. A Monday at Subha Sadiq, 22nd of April in Makkah, Mukarrama. Dawn takes place at 4.20 or 4.21 in the morning. They say also this choice of time also carries significance. Daybreak signifies what? The darkness of the night is over. The light of day is coming. Our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha puts it like this. Lana shamsun. Lana shamsun. Walil afaqi shams. Wa shamsuna khayrun min shamsi samai. Lianna shamsa samai tatlu'u ba'da fajrin. Wa shamsuna tatlu'u ba'da ishai. She says we have one sun and the horizon has one sun. Our sun is better than the sun of the horizon. Why? Because the sun of the horizon rises when after daybreak it's already light. If it didn't rise it would make no difference. Our sun, the hearts of humanity were dead. The hearts of humanity were steeped in darkness. Our sun rose and lit up the hearts of the entire humanity. أَفَلَتْ شُمُوسُ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَشَمْسُنَا أَبَدًا عَلَىٰ أُفُقِ الْعُلَىٰ لَا تَغْرُبُوا Like the poet says, the suns, the sources of light of the nations of the past have set our sun, our source of light, our hadi, our mubashir, our nadir, our da'i Allah, our siraj, our munir, our mustafa, our mujtaba, our Nurul Huda, our Awalul, our Sayyidul Awaleen, our Khatim, our Akhirin, our Khatamul Ambiyai, our Mursaleen, our Muzzamil, our Muddathir, our Hadi, our Bashir, our Nadir, our Dail Allah, our Ahmad, our Muhammad, our Mahi, our Hashir, our Aqib, our Fatih, our Taha, our Abu Al Qasim, our Yasin, our Zainam and Wafa Yom Al Qiyama, our Nabiul Malahim, our Nabiul Marhama, Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the physical sun will set, the sky nad will be destroyed, Qiyamat will come, Shamsuna, Abadan ala ufuqil ula la taghrubu, once his sun has risen, this sun will never set. Such a Nabi, such a Nabi, this Ummat was given. Throughout the ages, throughout the ages, throughout the ages, Nabi upon Nabi was sent. Every Nabi, every Nabi told his Ummat of the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sent him with such a shan of nubuwat. When Allah in Quran speaks of the previous Anbiya, لِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had وَإِن مِّنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا خَلَا فِيهَا نَذِيرٍ وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودًا أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعِيبًا فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ Look at this, what is Quran saying? If for the previous Anbiya, every Ummat one Rasul, every Ummat one Nabi, Aad one Nabi, Thamud one Nabi, Shu'ayb, Qawm Madian one Nabi, Saba one Nabi, Previous Anbiya came with shan of Nubuwat but restricted. Restricted to that Nabi, restricted to one period, till finally the moment of the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then the entire 
entire mode of expression of Quran changes. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا blessed is that being who revealed the furqan the quran upon his slave muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liyakun lilalamin nadira so that he will become a nabi for the entire alam alam al insan not only insan alam al jinnat wa id sarafna ilayka نفر من الجن يستمعون القرآن قل أوحي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن الله ميد him نبي of إنسان الله ميد him نبي of جنات الله ميد him نبي علي رضي الله تعالى عنه says I walked with رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما استقبله حجر ولا شجر ولا مدر إلا قال الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله he says I didn't pass a tree I didn't pass a stone I didn't pass a sand heap except that it would address him الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله Allah made him Nabi of the animals Allah made him Nabi of the birds more ajeeb than that ana nabiyul anbiya allah made him nabi of even the anbiya alayhim assalam 7 years of age 6 or 7 years he goes on a journey with abu talib towards sham towards syria cutting the incident short on the way buhaira rahib an ascetic comes to know that there is something unique about this qafla who is your leader they say abu talib he sends a message i'm inviting your caravan for meals The whole town is shocked. Buhaira was never seen for decades. How come he's inviting you people? What's so special about you? So what they do, they leave the little six or seven year old boy Muhammad to look after the camels. They present themselves around the Soma'ah, the worship place of Buhaira, which was located in a tree. They surround the tree. Buhaira comes out, starts looking around. Are all the members of your caravan here? They say, yes, but there is one small boy we left him behind he said you fools it is because of that youngster that i invited you send for the youngster they send for the youngster allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam comes as he comes desert climate there is no shade shade is premium it's almost the middle of the day whatever little shade was taken was there was already taken as this young child approaches the clouds start moving they move so that they can shade and cover the body of this child every one of them sees this buhaira also sees this he says do you see what happened do you see what happened there was not a tree not a stone that this child did pass except that it made sajda to him and greeted him allah made him nabi of anbiya allah made him nabi of the tree allah made him nabi of the birds allah made him nabi of the insects then buhaira goes on he questions them tell me who is this child who is this child abu talib says he is my son buhaira says you are a liar the script my scriptures have informed me that the father of this child passed away before his birth you cannot be his father abu talib says yes he is not my son the son of my brother who is deceased but i love him more than my own children buhaira sends for the youngster brings him closer look then he asks he sees red lines in the whiteness of the pupils of the eyes of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam 7 years of age and he asks them ya as abu talib are these lines there because of the tiredness of the journey or are they there all the time abu talib says they are there all the time when buhaira hears this he grabs hold of the little boy lifts the kurta up turns him around turns him around and he sees the seal of nubuwwat on the back of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then immediately he addresses abu talib and that caravan he says this is the last nabi of allah that the entire universe was waiting for i am imploring you take him back to makkah because if the jews come to know about him they will try to kill him such a nabi every nabi of allah from adam alayhi salam from adam alayhi salam throughout the ages is informing of the coming of muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam such a shan he came with 
My respected brothers, the fact of the matter, the fact of the matter is that due to time constraints, it is impossible even to scratch the surface of this topic. It is impossible. And unfortunately, I've said this many times before, we have become an ummah of rituals. We are going through the motions. The reality, the haqqaiq, what the sabak, what the lesson, what the philosophy is, that unfortunately to a very large extent escapes us. Not just escapes us, we don't want to understand it, we don't want to take it to heart. However, due to time constraints, just a few points, we will, they will deliberate on in detail. So that at least the sabak, the philosophy, the lesson, the haqiqat, the reality we can take back with us. Alama ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah has written a kitab. It's called Aqsamul Qur'an. Aqsamul Qur'an. Ulama amongst us can make mutala. What is Aqsamul Qur'an? The kitab that was written on the qasams, on the oaths that Allah takes in the Qur'an. Many places in the Qur'an, Allah takes qasam and oath. Amongst all the qasams in the Qur'an, what is the first qasam? Last qasam we know, wal-asr. Inna al-insana lafi khusr. Wal-asr, by the oath of time, this is the last qasam of the Qur'an. First qasam which the Qur'an takes is in Surah Nisa, where Allah says, Fala wa rabbik. Fala wa rabbik. La yu'minun. Hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara baynahum. ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما الله أكبر. Of all the qasams, this is the first qasam in the Quran. If you look at Quran page by page from the beginning, this is the first qasam. Alama ibn al Qayyim, رحمه الله في his kitab, أقسام القرآن, he says this is the most beautiful qasam of the Quran. Literally translated, what does it mean? Fala wa rabbik. Fala wa rabbik. Allah is addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa rabbik. Allah is addressing the Rabb. Allah is addressing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, literal translation, Allah addresses Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like this. That, O oh my beloved, O oh my beloved, by the qasam of your Rabb. Allah Himself is saying this. Allah says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the qasam of your Rabb. Who is the Rabb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Allah Himself. Yet literally this is the translation. By the qasam of your Rabb. In other words, as if your Rabb is someone else. The one taking the qasam is someone else. The one on whom the qasam is being taken is some As if. This, according to the rules of eloquence of the Arabic language, this mode of expression is used when muhabbat and love reaches its intiha, when it reaches its absolute height. When muhabbat and love reaches its absolute height, then the one taking the qasam, it is as if he separates himself into two entities. One side he takes the qasam, on the other side is the other entity himself. Allah says, by the qasam of the Rabb of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether, it is, whether they live in Africa, whether they live in Australia, whether they live in Asia, whether they live in China, whether it is the camel age, whether it is the space age, whether it is the rocket age, whether they walk on the earth or walk on the moon, or space travel starts and they start walking on Mars and Jupiter. Whoever, wherever, whenever, by the qasam of your Rabb, by Allah's qasam, by my qasam, Allah says, they will never get Iman, they will never get Jannat, they will never get my pleasure, they will never get my closest closeness, they will never succeed in dunya, qabr and akhirat, until they do not mold yourself, themselves in the mold of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
By my qasam Allah says, La yuminun. The iman will never be accepted. Jannat haram. My pleasure haram. My maghfirat haram. My closeness haram. Goodness of this world and akhirat haram. Whoever, wherever, whenever. La yuminun. Hatta yuhakkimu kafi ma shajara baynahum. Until in every affair, they do not color themselves with the color of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it does not stop there. It does not stop there. Allah says, ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا From their hearts, from their hearts they have to believe with absolute conviction that without a doubt there is no better way, there is nothing superior than the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ And then it doesn't stop there also. Allah says, وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا دِلْ دِمَاغ جَان Life, blood, with the entire essence they hand themselves over to you, my Nabi, till that time, la yu'minun, the iman will never be accepted. Of all the qasams in the Qur'an, this is the first qasam of the Qur'an, and this is the most beautiful qasam of the Qur'an. Qur'an, Qur'an, more than 6,000 verses. Qur'an is bakhrul la sahila lahu, it's a limitless ocean. We cannot even scratch the surface of the Qur'an. Yet there are certain verses, certain verses in the Qur'an where the nichor, where the essence is given to us. In layman's terms, understand it, shortcut. All of us are looking for shortcut. Minimum expenditure, minimum effort, maximum return. One such example is this verse where Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Again, لَا قَدْ لَا قَدْ Definitely, without a doubt كَانَ What is كَانَ? Ask the ulama. كَانَ مِنْ يَفِسْلَ هُوْ چُكَ It's not a debate, not open to debate. هُوْ گَيَا It's been decided already. لَا قَدْ Kana for who? For who has it been decided? Lakum for you. You, the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says it has already been decided. Laqad kana lakum fi Allahu Akbar. Quran is ajib. Fi. What is fi? Sometimes you find a person, he's got the towel around his shoulder, he's standing in front of the ocean. Or in front of the swimming pool and he's shivering. Water is cold also. It's a cold day, he's shivering and standing there. Till he doesn't jump in, till he doesn't jump in, he'll stand till calm and nothing's gonna happen. He's gotta submerge himself first. He's gotta throw himself in first, then only he'll progress. Otherwise, no progress. This is fee. This is fee. What is Quran telling us? Submerge yourself in what? Submerge yourself, close your eyes, close your ears, close your mind, put the towel around yourself, forget everything and throw yourself into what? Fi Rasulillah. Fi Rasulillah. Throw yourself into Muhammadur Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your logic in the back, what you see in the back, what you hear in the back, what the whole world is telling you in the back, what the media is telling you back, say no to everything. Laqad, without a doubt, kana, fesla ho chuka, iske alawa koi rasta nahi hai, it's been decided there's no other way, fi, submerge yourself, Rasulillah, uswatun hasana, then you will find beauty, then you will find perfection, then you will find closeness, then you will find Allah, Quran could have said uswatun kamila, for you in the Rasul of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the most kamil, perfect, perfect example. Quran could have said perfect. And logically there would have been no problem with this. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa was kamil, akmal, awwal, athar, azka. 
He was perfection. He was the height. He was the epitome. Every aspect. Shariat reached perfection upon him. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Deen akmaltu lakum deenakum. Kamal deen took place on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nubuwat reached Kamal also upon him. He said, Mathali wa mathalu al-anbiya min qabli. My example and the anbiya before me was the example of a house which was being built throughout the ages. The house was semi-completed. There was one corner of it uncomplete. Then what did he say? Ana labinatul akhira wa ana akhirun nabiyin. I am the culmination. I am the completion. I am the epitome. I am the perfection of the home of Nubuwat. La nabi abadi, wa la ummat abad ummati. No nabi to come after me. Deen reached Kamal on him. Nubuwat reached Kamal on him. Bu'istu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq. Akhlaq and character reached Kamal. He was Kamal. He was awal. He was azka. He was perfection. Yet, Allah doesn't say uswatun kamila. Allah says uswatun hasana.